Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving, all of the fibre related things. Today's video is a little bit of a spinning confessional. <laughs> I often sit and chat about my knitting works in progress, my crochet works in progress, but I don't often talk about my spinning works in progress in one concentrated video. I usually chat about them as we go through my making wrap up, but it's been a while since I gathered all of my current spinning projects together. As I'm recording this, it is the first week in June. At the beginning of July and throughout July, it will be the Tour de Fleece. Um, I'm sure if you're a spinner or even if you're not, if you're part of the sort of fibre community, you may have heard of the Tour de Fleece. And basically it's a little challenge that runs every year alongside the cycle race, the Tour de France. And spinners set themselves little goals and try to spin throughout the length of the Tour de Fleece. While the riders are biking, spinners spin their own wheels or spindles, of course. I am planning to participate in some way in the Tour de Fleece this year. I won't be part of any official teams. There are quite a few official teams that spring up, but I'm just going to set my own challenge. I'm not entirely sure what that will be yet. I have an idea of what I might like it to be, but that depends on some preparation for me to try and get through this month if I can. Perhaps I'll talk about that later in the video when we get to that particular project. But what I did think might be something a little bit fun for me would be to gather all of my spinning works in progress and most of them actually centre around my spindle projects. My spindles are probably my favourite way to spin at the moment, particularly my support spindles. So I thought it might be interesting to gather my current works in progress and to see if maybe I could clear off the spindles before the Tour de Fleece starts. Now I don't know how practical that's going to be, especially now I've gathered all of my spins together I can see there's a lot of them. <laughs> more than I had thought. So yeah, whether it will be uh, possible for me to clear these off before the Tour de Fleece at the beginning of next month, I don't know. But um, it will be fun to try. And it looks like for the most part, there'll be quite a lot of plying <laughs> in my future. Um, we'll chat about what I have on the spindles, on the wheels. To get stuck in to my spinning works in progress, I thought first I've got two projects, one on my Ashford e-spinner and one is a spindle spawn project which I know for sure will definitely not get done before the end of this month. So I'm kind of discounting those in my goals, my spinning goals for this month. However, I thought it'd be fun to chat to you about them as I'm gathering all of my spins in progress. And the first has come about thanks to this oh, giant bag of fibre that was recently gifted to me by the lovely Andy and Angela at Attic Spin Dye when I met them for the first time at Wonderwall Wales. I chatted a little bit about this fibre in my Wonderwall video, so if you're interested in checking that out and you haven't done so, I'll pop a link up above or down below somewhere so you can pop back to check out the Wonderwall fun. Yeah, Andy and Angela kindly gifted me some bats that they had dyed and made, but for one reason or another, they weren't quite happy with them. Um, so they asked if I wanted to take them and spin them. And of course I said, yes, the fiber is just beautiful, beautiful fiber. And so I started straight away. The evening that I came home from Wonderful Wales, I put some of this glorious bright orange onto my Ashford e-spinner and started spinning it up. I do have a bobbin of this fiber somewhere, but <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous. I, just, I could not locate it as I was scouring the house for my spindle projects and my, my spinning projects. It's here somewhere. I tidied up downstairs. I've got a little cart downstairs, which has got all of my sort of projects in progress that I'm currently working on. And I thought the bobbin was in there, but I can't find it. So I think I must have tidied it somewhere. It's a danger tidying up, isn't it? I don't know if you find this. When all of my stuff is scattered everywhere, um, completely untidy in a, in a total mess, I kind of know where everything is. And the minute I try to organize things, put them in some kind of order, I, I just can't find anything. <laughs> So if the bobbin emerges before I get this video up, it's going to take me a while to edit and upload this video. So I'm not sure when it will go up on the channel, but if I find that, <laughs> that 
that bob in i'll pop a little shot of it on the screen but yes i'm going to be slowly working my way through this oh, giant bag <laughs> full of fluffy fiber although i count that as a work in progress a spin in progress there's just no way <laughs> i'm getting through that bag i don't think there's probably a chance that i'll even get through just the orange fiber in that bag so um yeah i'm going to obviously count that as one of my works in progress but it's not on my list of things that i am going to strive to get done or clear off of my um, spinning list before the Tour de Fleece starts. And in a similar vein, I also have a spindle spun project, which ha I have many, many hours of fibre prep ahead of me. <laughs> and this one I have chatted about on the channel before, um, way back towards the end of last year. I definitely did a little bit through Vlogmas, probably before that as well. I am combing and spindle spinning a Shetland fleece that I have. And I've got, again, I've got several storage bobbins otherwise known as the cobble tubes in the middle of toilet rolls. <laughs> I've got several of those full up with fibre that I've already spun, but I cleared them out of the basket that they were being stored in and I've put them somewhere safe. You know what that means. <laughs> so again, if they resurface before <laughs> I upload this video, I'll pop a little shot of the spinning that I've already done. Um, it's not lots, but this takes time because I, as I say, I'm combing the fleece I have this giant pillowcase full of all of these fluffy locks. Um, this is the fleece that I washed, was it last summer or the summer before? Possibly the summer before. And yeah, it's such a beautiful, beautiful Shetland fleece. And I'm slowly working my way through that. I'm combing batches of about 20 grams of fibre at a time and then spinning them up onto my spindle. This is a beautiful spindle from Enid Ashcroft, a drop spindle. And I'm spinning this fleece quite fine. Um, so yeah, I'm spinning this up quite fine on my spindles and it's gonna take me years probably <laughs> to finish this spin. So again, this is definitely on my list of spin projects in progress, but there is just no way it's getting finished um, in the month of June. So this is not gonna be part of my let's clear off the projects before Tour de Fleece starts. <laughs> I have two other sort of fibre prep projects on my works in progress list too and one is a relatively new project and it's a brand new fleece that I purchased this year. Um, I purchased from Fernhill Farm and it's a beautiful Romney Shetland cross and I spent some time a few weeks ago hand carding some of the locks. I flicked out, I washed the fleece and then I flicked out some of the locks and then carded them with my hand cards into some fluffy rolags and my thought is although i'm not planning to spin through this fleece yet i'm trying to do a little bit of sampling to figure out how i do want to prep this fleece i have carded up i think about six or seven rolags my plan is to hand card some of the fleece to maybe comb some of the fleece and to also maybe put some of the fleece through my drum carder and to make a few samples and figure out what yarn I want to make and what fibre preparation I would like to pursue for the rest of this fleece. Uh, but with my Rolags, my plan is to spin some on my wheel and some on my spindles. So I have currently got um, one and a half Rolags spun up on my newest support spindle. This is a beautiful spindle from Georgia. It's handcrafted in a traditional way in Georgia and it is from the spindle maker Crovelli and I shall put links to their Instagram or their Etsy shop in the video below. And yeah, because this was my newest support spindle, um, I figured I would grab it and test it out on a couple of these lovely fluffy Rolags. My thought is, of course, I'm not going to finish my entire fibre prep or my sampling um, in June, but I thought I could have um, sort of finishing up these Rolags as a goal. Yeah, I think I can definitely add this to my goals for trying to get my spindles clear or my spinning projects clear before the Tour de Fleece. I think this is doable. And then next on my list, um, the last sort of fibre prep project, if you like. The fibre prep is actually done. And this is one of my 12 cast-ons projects. And I'm aiming to spin and hopefully knit a love note sweater. And this is actually the project that I'd love to work on throughout the Tour de Fleece. So I have a basket, a huge basket, as big as my head, <laughs> full of um, lovely bats in this beautiful fibre from Velvet Sixpence. And I made bats from three braids of fibre. It's a BFL silk, I believe, if I remember rightly. 
looking on the floor because I know I have one of the labels here. So um, Humbug Merino, um, so that just means several different colours of Merino, so not BFL at all. <laughs> Humbug Merino and Mulberry Silk, 75, 25. And I have put them through my drum carder because one of the braids was quite a bit darker than the other and I wanted to try and spread the colours, blend the colours a little bit more. Um, so my fibre prep is done, but I do want to sample again to figure out what I want to do with this yarn. For the love note, I will be holding it double with some mohair. So I need to figure out whether I want to spin a singles hand spun or whether I want to do a two ply. So I need to do a little bit of sampling and I'm hoping to get that sampling done through June so that this can become my main focus. I'd love to get my spinning done um, through the Tour de Fleece. This is quite a lot of fibre to spin. I think with a bit of concerted effort, I, c I could do it. Um, or at least get a good way through this basket. I have one more project on my e-spinner. It's very unusual for me to have two e-spinner projects going at the same time, but I don't know why. Um, well, I actually, I do know why. <laughs> it's a symptom, I think, of my up and down mental health the last six weeks or so. My brain's been all over the place, and I think it's definitely being reflected in my making. I've started and not really made progress with a bunch of projects i'm making very very slow progress with my knitting works in progress like usually i can focus in and make some progress on something or several projects but at the moment my crafting mojo <laughs> is very much either non-existent um, on some days or all over the place like i want to do all of the things on other days so i started a new spin project and i've been itching to try out and experiment a little bit more with some more art yarns. I've done very little in the way of art yarn making, but I had this real inkling to try and make some coiled yarn with some beautiful beehives. And it's a technique that I've not done before. And I'm using my e-spinner to spin some thick and thin single yarn to hopefully then spiral ply and make some beehives. And that project is on my e-spinner because, and that is a project that's actually on my spinner. So I didn't bring it up, but I will insert some footage of what I've got on my bobbin and what I've got left to spin. It's a mystery fibre that I received in a package. I think I ordered a drop spindle and a spindle bag and I got some mystery fibre um, along with it. So I don't know what the content is. It's got some um, fibre that's got some quite long guard hairs in there. So I figured because I didn't have a particular project for that fibre. It might be a good one just to play around with because I'm not sort of invested. Um, I don't really mind if it doesn't go to plan if my art yarn doesn't work out. It's just, yeah, fibre to play with rather than fibre to be precious about. Um, so yeah, that is on the go on my e-spinner and I would really like to get that finished before the Tour de Fleece starts. So we've chatted about all of my sort of larger projects and that just leaves me. I went round collecting up all of my spindles <laughs> and yarn that I'd spun on my spindles and hadn't yet applied and I've got this basket which doesn't look too big but as you can see it's overflowing with projects and in the bottom of this basket there's loads of singles that need plying so this is going to be the <laughs> bulk of my sort of goal spinning for the rest of this month. I would love to empty this basket. We shall see. <laughs> so I'm going to pop the basket on the floor and then I'm going to grab the projects and chat to you about them as we go. So first up in this beautiful project bag by my lovely friend Julia who is Mindful Magpie, um, I have a Turkish spindle project on the go and I have been concentrating on this over the last week or so. So I've actually made some good progress on this and I'm spinning some beautiful fibre I've split it down so it looks a little bit scruffy but I've split it down into little nests and this is some fibre from Cat and Sparrow and it was a lovely gift from my friend Ruth and Ruth gifted me the braid of fibre along with this um, turtle made 3D printed spindle. This beautiful spindle, green and blue, which the green matches perfectly with this fibre. And I think you can see from the singles that I've been spinning on there, the fibre itself is a beautiful combination of green and yellow, this sort of golden colour. 
and I think the gold might be silk I don't know um, I didn't have a band I don't think with this fibre um, Ruth had started spinning herself on the spindle and decided that she wasn't a, a fan of spinning on the Turkish spindle I think so um, she asked me if I would like to rehome this and of course <laughs> I'm never going to turn down a beautiful spindle in the bottom of this project bag, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to hold this up. I've got tons of little nests of singles that I've already spun. So there's a good sort of three quarters of the fiber in the bottom of that bag, if not more, probably more I think, because I, this is all I have left now. Lie, one's escaped. This <laughs> is all I have left now. I haven't weighed this, but I reckon it's gotta be 15 grams at the most. So I think, in the next couple of evenings I'll have spun this up and then I can get to plying and I'm planning on plying all of my spindle spun projects on my e-spinner I think just for speed otherwise I'm never going to be able to get this all done <laughs> in June um, and I can ply quite quickly on my e-spinner it's one of the things that I adore my e-spinner for. Next project in my basket there is another Turkish spindle project. I've actually got three Turkish spindle projects on the go so we'll go through those first and this was a beautiful another beautiful gift. The spindle and the fibre um, was a lovely gift from Deb, our one of our lovely Yarn and Yarns community members. Deb gifted me this beautiful spindle from Snyder and you can't really see but I could take this off and show you but there are some beautiful sheep cutouts um, on this spindle and Deb gifted me three Rolags along with the spindle. Recently just finished this one so let me pop this off I don't need to keep it on the spindle anymore and I can show you the beautiful sheepy cutouts on the arms of this spindle it's so pretty. Um, this is a slightly heavier weight um, Turkish spindle than um, a lot of the other ones I own. So I did struggle a little bit when I first got spinning with it because I've been used to spinning on the lighter weight spindles and my fibre kept breaking um, because I was trying to really spin it too thin for the weight of the spindles. Um, but once I cottoned on <laughs> to what was going wrong and I spun a slightly thicker weight spindle, oh, this spindle was just an absolute dream to work with. And again, I think this would actually be a really good one for plying too, but um, I'm for speed again going to be plying this up on one of my wheels so that little sample of this beautiful fiber it's sort of sea greens um aquas and some gold there's a little bit of pink and there's some sparkle in here too um, so yeah that is sat patiently waiting to be plied my final turkish spindle project is actually um sort of occupying several bags in a box at the moment this is my second spin to knit project um, that i started during the 12 cast-ons and i'm spinning through the lovely fiber advent calendar that i purchased last year from my lovely friend caroline colorful creativity and i had decided to spin through um, all of the bumps of fiber and then spin a contrast colour to knit up into a litmus cowl. Now, I think I'm actually going to be changing my plans for that. And I'm not going to be using this yarn, I don't think, in my litmus cowl. And I'll chat more about that in a second because um, lots of the singles that I've got left in my basket are singles that I'm thinking actually might be better suited for the litmus cowl. On, I've got two Turkish spindles um, that I'm using for this project. One is a 3D printed Turkish spindle that was a gift from Caroline that was um, 3D printed by her lovely husband and that spindle is actually living in this box. Um, I took this out with me to do some on the go spinning and I didn't want the spindle to get damaged so I popped it in this mug box <laughs> that I had and I've not actually got very far on this most recent um, sort of quantity of fibre. So it's only just started and I've got lots more. This is the first half of the fibre and this is the second. So I've got lots more to go um, to get this part of my advent spun up. These one, two, three, four bags. I have the other quantities that I've spun up from that advent calendar. So these are just play, patiently waiting to be plied. So my goal is to try and finish spinning fibre bump that I've got on the go and 
apply that along with the other five as well and in one of these bags here it is is the other spindle that i'm using to work this progress at uh, this project and is another beautiful turtle made um spindle that i purchased on these dash um from the lovely andrea hi andrea if you're watching yeah i've been alternating between spinning on this spindle and the beautiful bronze uh, 3d printed spindle too goal for the rest of this month will be to ply these up i have completed four and the fifth is on the go um so yeah there's there's no way <laughs> i'm going to be spinning the other 19 before the end of june um but it would be nice to get all of these plied um so yeah those are the plans for that spin and then for the most part the rest of my basket contains projects that need plying although there is one where i need to do a little bit more spinning so anyway let's chat about what's left in the basket we're we're getting there <laughs> This is a longer video than I thought it was going to be. Um, so first up, I've got two little cakes of singles yarn here that I have been spinning on my drop spindles. This is my only drop spindle project on the go. And this was a beautiful blend of fibre that was a gift from my lovely friend Lisa. And it was a blend of Black Welsh Mountain, uh, the lovely sort of dark chocolatey brown colour and some mystery blue fiber and the blue kind of goes in a gradient it's you can probably see the difference between the two cakes there's a lot more blue um, in this one and it's only very slight in this one so um, sort of the blue fades through the spin so i've been spinning these as i say on my drop spindle and i just need to two ply these up and i think i will be three plying these chain ply them to keep that sort of color the progression of the color sort of density through the yarn next in the basket <laughs> it's still not empty yet um i've got two these don't go together but they're just two little sample spins um so this one was an some extra yarn from some rolags that i made on my blending board and the yarn that i actually finished i think i had three sort of cakes of yarn and i applied one as a two ply one as a chain ply and i knit a little gnome from it and i've actually got a video a blending board video um, coming up about this yarn uh, but this was a little leftover and I was kind of on the fence about how to apply this and it's just sat as a little cake on the side here <laughs> right next to me and it's time to actually just ply this up and I have decided I'm going to chain ply this to try and keep the sort of rainbow colour progression it's a mix of Corydale and Blueface Leicester fibre and um, there's a grey sort of Corydale running throughout this and over the top I blended some rainbow coloured Blueface Leicester so yeah that's just going to make a little sample skein and then also on my support spindles um, i recently worked up um, another blending board sample this again orange corydale with some sparkles some angelina gold angelina and some recycled sari silk running throughout this so again i just needed to ply this yarn up to finish up my little sample can you tell i like spinning the singles <laughs> and I don't get quite so much joy out of the plying. <laughs> I promise this is the final project to share with you for this video. <laughs> so in my basket, I have <laughs> mostly um, a bunch of singles waiting to be plied, surprise, surprise. <laughs> this basket contains fibre that I purchased last, I don't know when, but it was a advent for Halloween if that's the thing obviously it is because I bought one <laughs> and in this basket I think there were 10 bumps of 20 grams worth of fiber and it was quite an unusual blend if I remember rightly but I've lost a bit of paper telling me what blend it was um it was either something like BFL or merino and rose fiber I think maybe I'm not sure if I figure it out I will put it on the screen but over the last few weeks, couple of months, I have been working my way through this calendar of fibre. And I have got two bumps left to spin. Ooh, trying to balance the basket on my lap and failing. Um, so I've got this beautiful fuchsia pink and this really deep plummy purple, um, sort of bordering on burgundy, um, left to spin. Aren't those colours gorgeous? Um, and then I've also got um, a few of my support spindles that are pretty much and then the rest of the basket contains all of the other colors the singles that i spun up and i'll pop a picture on the screen now i had to empty my support spindles because i had filled up every single spindle that i own <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so yeah I'll pop a picture of that up on the screen now so this basket is full of singles waiting to be plied patiently and as you can see there's a glorious array of colours in here and this project is actually making me consider pivoting on my litmus cowl my 12 cast on because I am adoring spinning the beautiful fibre that is part of Caroline's advent but the colours are much more variegated so I'm trying to picture that in my litmus cowl and I feel like it might be a little bit too busy for the look that I want whereas these colours are all semi-solid um, in effect so I think I'm going to be knitting my litmus from this Halloween advent fibre rather than my Christmas advent fibre as I had originally planned so it would be lovely 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 <laughs> if I could get all of this spun and plied before Tour de Vlies starts I think I can do it although having said that I also think I can ply one, two, three, four, five, six, six other projects, sample that one, sample that one. <laughs> there are six months until July, aren't there? <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. There's going to be a lot of spinning in my future if I can get this all done. I'm feeling hopeful, reasonably confident, <laughs> motivated. Yes, I'm feeling motivated to get this done now I've got it you should see the mess that's in front of me on the floor now bags of fiber piles of singles I, I, I've literally barricaded myself into this corner behind a wall of half spun projects <laughs> that is everything that I currently have on my spinning wheels and spindles spins in progress confession over leave your thoughts on what I need to do to serve my penance to atone <laughs> to ask for forgiveness in the comments below <laughs> if you're a spinner also let me know what projects you currently have on your spindles and wheels i'd love to know and if you have plans for tour de fleece then do let me know that as well because as i say i'm going to be kind of spinning in a little team of one <laughs> Um, but I'd love to be inspired by all of your lovely plans if you're going to be participating. Right, I need to do sign off and it looks like I need to get busy plying. <laughs> so time to say goodbye for this video. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I should be back again soon with some more content here on the channel. Um, so I hope you will join me for the next video. But until we do get to spend time together again, I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now. Bye.